went to hardware store, spent way too long deciding what type of wood to get for the wall framing. Ended up going with the exact same wood that's up at the top. Seems like the trickiest part is going to be holding this still while I mark everything. Ah, see? I'm definitely going to have to go back and measure this to make sure that I got this right. Well, fun fact. Got this whole thing up here. For some reason, this screw did not want to go in this hole. If I need to come back in and put a regular screw in just through the wall, I can do that. It's a little bit disappointing that I got all of them correct except that one. However, all in all, this is working. It's annoying, but it's working. I'm literally using the exact same method that I did for the ceiling pieces. On the ceiling pieces for sure, I'm going to put some just regular screws in on the ends just to keep it a little bit more good. <laughs> and I think that will be okay. Let's do it. <laughs> so I got in all the boards that I wanted to tonight, but I think I would be lying if I said that I was super satisfied with my method. Everything should be working perfectly. I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's the plus nuts. I don't know if it's my technique in like using the drill, but so far, every single board has one screw that won't go all the way in, no matter how much I mess with it, no matter what I do, and now also won't come out. I think I'll be able to take like a crescent wrench or something to it and force it out. That's really disappointing. And again, it could just be my technique. I might just be going in at a weird angle thinking I'm going straight because obviously some of them work. Some of them go in really easily. Others go in after I like take it in and out a bunch of times. I just can't say for sure. And right now this sucks. <laughs> I do think that I have enough bolts in that these are secure. And I am going to go back to the area next to where these bad bolts are to just use the like self tappers. I still think this is really, really secure. It's going to work. But for the amount of effort that I'm putting into this, not only installing the plus nuts, but measuring, remeasuring, messing with the holes, lining everything up, it is a lot of work. But I at least have some framing in. We'll start this up again later. All right, so I've done a little bit more work, as you can see. I not only got the rest of the horizontal supports up, but I've also cut out, measured the vertical supports. They're not actually connected yet. I just wanted to get them all cut. A little thing that I did, and I can show you here, because I'm gonna have to take these off to put in the pocket holes using the Craig jig, which I'm kind of excited about because I've wanted one of those forever. And each one is a precise measurement. I wanted to be sure that I put them back in the right place. So I drew little symbols on them. And that way, when I put them back, I can just match the symbols, line it up, and I know it'll fit perfectly. Now it is time to bust out the Craig jig and see if I can get these things actually attached. And if I can, that's awesome, because honestly, this didn't take very long. I would go over my methods, but it's almost exactly what anybody would do. Basically, I just, for this, measured and cut, and it actually worked. So I am not very good at actually cutting. I'm still trying to figure out like how the width of the blade fits in. I always err on the side of slightly bigger and I'm learning how to trim down, you know, so all of that is just practice. Now, if I can get the pocket holes to work, then I'll be able to move to the other side and get the other side done too. I'm gonna read the instructions. We're gonna figure out how to use this thing. So the first thing I have to do is determine the thickness of the material that I'm drilling into. And for that, they give you this little piece here. I just set it like this and then read where it lands. So the bottom of this is in that one half range. So I'm gonna be setting the Craig jig to one half. To do that, first thing I have is the actual drill bit that comes with the kit. And this also has different settings. When I got this, it was on the three fourths. I had to move it to the one half. And the way that I did that was by sticking that same little tool in, I loosened it and dropped it. And now this piece slides. So you can see I can set it 
by simply sliding it up and retightening it and that'll set it to the one half. And now I need to set the actual jig. There are these little pieces in the back that move. If you push down on this little tab here, I can move it down. I can also slide it up. And what I wanna do is make sure that the part where this gray thing shows through is on the same material thickness setting. So as you can see, this one's in the wrong place. So I'm just gonna push down and slide up and now they're both in the right place. So now I should be ready to actually drill some holes. Then I clamped the jig into place. Now there are some jigs that like are a whole big setup and they come with the clamp, but I figure I need clamps anyways. So might as well just have something that's a little more portable. It does originally come with a middle piece, like a spacer that goes in between, but that made it a little bit too wide for my needs. And now I think I just drilled a hole. Wish me luck. So I pushed this all the way down to this. Remember we adjusted this spacer. So hopefully when I take this off, I should have a perfect pocket hole. Hey, that looks pretty good. So now I'm gonna line up the other one, pull it until it hits the little spacer, get this clamp back on. Oh, and it did say to make sure with the clamp that you don't cover up this first hole. Cause as you may have seen, that's where a bunch of sawdust was coming out. Clamp this again. Make sure that's nice and tight. Now I'm going into this one. I'm gonna go all the way down. And now I have two pocket holes. So yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and do the other end now. I think I'm gonna go ahead and put those close together. And that way this will go a little bit faster. And I believe with the rest of them, I'll be able to do them both this close. So I have my pocket holes done on both sides. It's time to actually put this piece on. Now this does come with some screws already. According to the chart here, because I'm using the one half inch range, it's telling me I need to use the one inch screws. I could probably get away with using the one and a quarter inch because I'm like right on the edge between the one half inch and the three fourths inch range, but I don't want the screws to stick out the bottom and I don't want to waste a bunch of wood. So I'm going to get the actual recommended size. I picked up a whole bunch of the one inch screws specifically for the softer woods because this is definitely not a hard wood. So we're going to try it out. Now the other thing that this kit comes with is a special drill bit that goes with these pocket screws. So we're going to see if we can't get this thing installed. The tricky part is I'm supposed to clamp this. However, it is flush against the wall. I don't think clamping is possible for me. So we're gonna try it without clamping. Please work, please work, please work. So I'm not gonna put that one all the way in. I wanna make sure that the other one goes in straight. I know when you tighten things, sometimes the wood tends to twist. All right, and now for the top. The furring strip is in. So I'm gonna do that a bunch more times. All right, so I got all of them in. The only thing is I need to attach this one to the metal up here. So I didn't extend this one out quite far enough, but that means I'm gonna have to drill directly into the metal. Hopefully this goes better than my experience the other night when I was putting in these last pieces. I was adding some, you know, just sheet metal screws, even just trying to pre-drill. Some areas I could get through with the drill bit. Other areas, like I would drill and drill and drill and the drill would just get hotter and hotter and I would like lift up the piece of wood and you could barely see like a little scratch. I'm like, what in the world? So I did pick up uh, some new drill bits. They're the same kind, so I don't know if they'll be any better, but maybe because they're newer, it'll be a little sharper. Anyways, I'm gonna attempt to drill a pilot hole here so that I can get a screw in and get this one fully secured. So here's hoping that a brand new drill bit will drill through this metal. Yay! I'm gonna do the same thing to the other side and then start trimming the pieces for the lower parts. It's starting to look like I'm actually building a van. <laughs> Yay. So I've done a little bit more work. I put up these boards right here. It seems like different people do this little upper corner in many different ways. I've seen people put like two by fours or two by sixes. I've seen it done a lot of different ways, but I did see somebody who put 
kind of a straight line, kind of similar to what I've done here, right up to the edge of the ceiling, the one on the ceiling. And so I thought, well, if that works, then why don't I just put two here? So I put the first one in, the one that's closest to the wall, just to make sure that it would work. And it does, and I have room still for a second one. So I'm gonna be putting in another line here. That way, when I put the ceiling in, it'll just nice and evenly come down. One thing I did learn, I have now broken two new drill bits. So I'm clearly gonna need a whole bunch of drill bits because they wear down quickly. I also found that it was a little bit easier to drill them in when I had a fresh and full battery. I went ahead and pre-cut all the vertical supports and I pre-cut for all the way around the van. So now all I need to do is just create a whole bunch of pocket holes, then get those up and installed. I'm gonna start by doing all the vertical supports. Gonna go to Home Depot, get quite a few more drill bits and that way I can get these other supports up. Then I'm going to figure out what I'm going to do where the roof meets the headliner. The same thing on this back end here. All right, let's do some pocket holes. So here are all of my pre-cut pieces. As you can see, I have numbered them. I also put numbers up on the furring strips on the walls so that when it's time to put these back, I know exactly where to put them. All right, so I'm not gonna do anything fancy with these. I'm just gonna put two pocket holes along the very bottoms. And then I'm gonna put one on the top because the ceiling piece comes was gonna come out at an angle. So I'm not sure that a pocket hole screw is really appropriate for that use. But what I may end up doing is just gluing the back of it to the van wall itself. That is still to be determined. But in the meantime, I'm gonna cut some pocket holes. So a thing I didn't think about is that when I drilled the holes, it kind of covered up the numbers. You can still kind of see them. This one, you can't tell what that is at all, but that's okay. I left them in order, grouped them by section, and I'm about to put these up right now. So it should be, it should be fine, right? It'll be fine. That'll be fine. All right, so I'm gonna start with this side with board number one, and then do the other side. So those went well. The pocket hole screws at the top actually did kind of go in. This part, however, the bit that this comes with is really long. I don't know, it's gonna be it's gonna be close. I don't know if I'll be able to fit this in there, but yeah, that's what I'm gonna find out next. All right, that was really close on most of them. One of these screws, for some reason, I couldn't actually get it all the way in, but all the other screws went in okay, so that should be fine. Yeah, I think this worked quite nicely. All right, so got the, rest of the short vertical things up. That actually went really well. It didn't take very long at all. Thank you pocket screws. So now what I'm gonna do is cut this two by two to get the very front and the very back trim done. So I've went ahead and measured the sizes of these pieces that I need. Cause this is, since this is thicker, it won't flex like the furring strips will. So in order to at least somewhat match the curve of the van, I have to cut it into small pieces and attach them that way. But I've seen other people do it, so why not try it too? So that was awesome. This was like exactly the right size piece of wood. I was able to cut the four for the back and I only needed three up front and it's literally perfect. That does not happen very often, so let's just bask in this moment. Perfection. Ah. All right. Now let's head to Home Depot and see how I'm gonna put these things up. Might literally just glue these because I don't know if I can drill through this and through the metal or if that's even a good idea. Also, maybe I'm just tired, so I may glue it though. I've seen people glue these pieces. So I ended up just gluing these. I have not yet taken the tape off and I don't think I'm going to until I make my final decision on whether I am going to just leave it glued or if I'm gonna go ahead and add screws as well. But I don't know yet, so here it stays. All right, so I'm gonna put in the last two pieces, one up here and then the one that matches on the other side. Now these are pretty short pieces, so I'm just gonna hold them up as I do it. Plus I'm butting it up right against the edge of this other one. Now, when I was doing the longer ones, I clamped this one into this one. I wasn't able to clamp when I was putting the first one down because there was nothing to clamp it to. And that was really hard. If you just have somebody else with you, they can just hold it up for you while you change out your bits. That's great go ahead and drill my first pilot hole. Now this part takes forever. Ah. 
See how long that took? And second pilot hole. Ugh. So now I'm just gonna change my bit. This one is so that I can go ahead and countersink. It's time to screw this baby in. And now this is set. I'm gonna just go do the same thing on the other side and then I'll be all finished. I countersunk the wrong side. Now if I countersink the right side, I'm just gonna have a really big hole. I think I'm gonna have to drill pilot holes again, but in a slightly different place, which sucks because that is the suckiest part of this. Here we go again. So I countersunk the correct side this time. Yeah, luckily I didn't have to waste the wood because I was able to just screw it into a slightly different location. I flipped the piece of wood around so I wasn't drilling too close to my other holes. But yeah, that is it for my framing. With this framing as is, I could, if I wanted to, start putting up the ceiling on the walls, which I think is great. I say I'm done with the framing, but I don't think any part of this is ever going to actually be done. I'm sure I'm going to be coming back to every part of this until I have it like all covered up and done. I have a feeling nothing's actually going to be done. So I'm just going to call this done because I am going to be moving on to the next part of the project, which is to go up on the roof. I'm not going to lie. I'm stuck. I've tried everything to get those holes to align. I don't know what to do. Apparently this is a thing with installing these, but out of all the videos that I've watched, I've never seen anybody have this problem. So of course, it'll be me. 